Welcome to Acoustic Corner. I'm Steve Rothenberg, and each week we'll explore the world of acoustic music, from blues to bluegrass, classical, flamenco, and fingerstyle guitar, and everything in between. We'll feature live performances by some of the best musicians and bands in the Denver area, and visit local guitar shops and luthiers to discover where you can find yourself a beautiful custom-made guitar, banjo, or mandolin. For those of you interested in learning how to play guitar or improving your skills, you'll find lessons on how to play fingerstyle guitar, blues guitar, as well as other popular styles. Join us each week for a tour through the acoustic music landscape. There's something for everyone at Acoustic Corner. Hi, I'm Steve Rothenberg, and I'm here with my friend Gene Kraut, who just conveniently happens to uh, own a recording studio in Arvada, Audio Digital is the name of his uh, company. And um, I did some recording with Gene a, a while back, uh, introduced by uh, one of our mutual friends, Mark Chirac, and Mark. You, you produced an album for him, didn't you? Indeed I did. That, that's, that's, uh, that's got, what, like 50 overlay tracks oh, on it? It was huge. Yeah. It was like close to, it was over 200 hours total production. <laughs> wow. Many, many tracks, lots yeah. of musicians coming yeah. in, yeah. And Mark will be on the show, uh, Mark and Kimberly will be on the show uh, coming up here soon. But the reason I'm here is um, uh, I, I, I saw you a couple of years ago. Um, I, I was one of those guys who uh, went out and bought a, uh, oh, at the time it was a uh, four track mini disc recorder. I paid like eight or nine hundred dollars mm -hmm. and, and it promised that you would come up with just, you know, phenomenal recordings. And, and I'm, I'm just not, you know, uh, I'd rather play my guitar than try to figure <laughs> out technology. I know a lot of people aren't like that, but if you are one of those people who uh, tried to uh, come up with some decent home recording of your acoustic music and um, you're just not real happy with uh, what you've got, then you'll find yourself in the same position I did when I came to Gene and decided I should uh, spend a little money but come up with a uh, pretty decent product. And as a matter of fact, um, uh, by the time you see this, uh, the recordings that I made with Gene will be up on our Facebook page, and you can download them. So uh, not only can you hear me, but you can hear the work that, uh, that Gene's come up with. So, um, so the situation is, uh, you know, if uh, we have somebody watching the show might say, you know, I've been thinking about going to a recording studio, but I have just no idea what, what to expect and how much it costs, and, you know, do I have to play something perfectly? I can, I can never play something straight through without screwing up somewhere. So, um, so you know, sell me on your, uh, sell it to me. I mean, if you've already sold it to me since I've, <laughs> since I've been here uh, at least, you know, uh, five or six times, and I'm really happy with uh, the stuff we got. But, awesome. um, so um, tell us a little bit about uh, the recording biz. And by the way, Gene's a, not only a, a recording engineer, but also a musician and a music teacher. So Indeed. he, uh, sort of a one-stop shop for, uh, hey. yeah. Yep. Uh, well, um, you know, there's a lot to look for in a studio in terms of pricing. There's there's prices all over the board from 25 bucks to per hour. 150. Yeah, 25 mm -hmm. an hour to 150 yeah. or so. Some studios charge for engineers. Mm -hmm. uh, some do not. I don't. It's basically a flat fee for the for the place, regardless of what I'm doing, and you get right. my services as well. Right. Um, you know, many of the uh, modern technologies are are very good. Right. Um, but it's not just the recorder that you need to, to deal with. There's preamps, there's good microphones, mm -hmm. there's all kinds of things along the chain that make a big difference in the quality of the recording. Right. So you can go out and buy GarageBand, you can have your Mac, and you can, <coughs> uh, any weak link like the mic or any of your, uh, your skills in mixing yep. and all that, is, is it gonna, it's just, you're gonna not be happy with what you got. That's true. Right, and it's not to say that there aren't plenty of people who do this successfully and do this all on their own. Oh, but, for sure. But that's not everybody. No, that's not everybody. It's not, and, it's not me. And it definitely takes a certain amount of time to get up to right. speed. Right. Um, so I've had people come. Right. Uh, I had a, a girl, a client, yeah. um, came to me, said, I want to record an album, and I, so I'm going to come to you to learn Pro Tools. I was, I'm teaching Pro Tools right. classes. Right. So she wanted to learn all about Pro Tools, and uh, within about three weeks, she came in and said, I can't do this. There's no way, because there's just so much to learn and, yeah. and all of the uh, things that are involved. Um, she ended up hiring me to record her album instead. Right. And, and, Pro, and Pro Tools is one of the, like the sort of the standard industry Oh, it standard is the industry standard recording software right. in the world right now. It's right. used in every major studio. Gotcha. I mean, not to say that uh, people don't use Logic or Cubase, other things right. like that, okay. but Pro Tools is the industry right. standard. And of course, sure. if I'm just a guy coming and I want to, you to record me, I don't really care. Pro right. Tools and it's like 
Right. Big deal. Well, the one good thing to know about that is yeah. if you go to a Pro Tool studio right. and you take your tracks with you, you can then take those tracks to any other oh, studio and it'll be transferable anywhere. Gotcha. That's a good um, point. And a lot of people are buying smaller Pro Tools rigs. Yeah. Uh-oh. Forgot to hit that button. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so uh, do, you have, do you have your phaser set no, on stun? Or that was my email. Yes. Yeah. Uh, gotcha. <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> um, so a lot of people are buying smaller Pro Tools rigs, right. uh, getting started with the basics of recording themselves, and then going into a bigger studio to avail themselves of the higher quality uh, converters, preamps, um, more plugins, right. greater processing power. Right. Um, it's it's a wonderful platform to be working on. Really, okay, I great. think it's great. Right. So um, so I come in with my guitar, and uh, you know I, I've got a I've got a, a, a pickup in it, but you probably have. Uh, uh, you, you probably just mic it, or do you use both the uh, output of my pickup and it, mic? Or it's depends. either that or a paper cup with a string. Sometimes yeah, yeah. I like, um, right. no, there's all kinds of different microphones. Um, right. My technique for recording acoustic guitar tends to be, um, if, if the guitar has a pickup in it, I right. will take that direct line, right. but I'll also put up at least one mic, if not two, right. on top of that, um, and, and just bring them all in so that I've got my choice Okay. When we go to mix, right? So, uh, so we go, we go sit down in your in, in your studio mm -hmm. in your uh, recording uh, booth, and we're we'll see that here shortly. Um, and um, uh, it, it's not it's not a real large room as as, as you can see, but it's, it's enough for me and my guitar. And, right. Uh, so you're not you're not going to you're not going to record a, a six piece band in uh, not in the in booth. There, in the Hence booth. the term booth. Yes. Right, if we booth. need more people, we yeah. or, or if we need more space, uh, right. we can also record out in the drum right. room. Right. There's another room uh, around yeah. the corner that yeah. uh, it's a little bigger. But if 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 I'm just playing solo guitar and you know or you, or you are, you, yep. you're basically just you know it's you and the guitar and the microphones. Right. And and the headphones. Right. And you know that was the. Um, uh, that was the, the thing that, that uh, I had to get used to. Uh, 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 it took me the longest to get used to, which is the click track. And uh, if you don't know what a click track is, it's essentially a time signal that allows or it encourages you to play at a even tempo mm -hmm. uh, throughout the song. So in case you do screw up, you can just do another take, and then you can seamlessly fit the good half of the first take and the good half of the second take and slap them together and you got, as a matter of fact, I think there must have been like six or seven different tracks that we had to put together on one of the tunes I kept on Sometimes. slipping up. Yep. But this click track, so now you got the, you got the headphones on and, right. and, and you're hearing uh, essentially a metronome. It's a metronome, right, right exactly. And I found that, you know, here's uh, for all you people who uh, your teachers tell you to play with a metronome and you don't, you really should. You should pra practice with a metronome. Now, if you're playing solo guitar or you're playing stuff where the tempo is changing. Yeah, if it's rubato, you can't yeah, do that. Yeah, right, no. exactly. Thank you for the term. Rubato. Sure. Rubato. It? Okay. Rubato, um, yes. How do you spell that? R-U-B-A-T-O, I believe. Correct. Thank you. Ten points. Nice. So, uh, so then, <laughs> Music uh, school worked for yeah, me for well, something. Right? I'm, I'm glad you learned something. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so uh, uh, of course then um, if you're playing at different speeds, then it's really going to be hard to, to match if you mess up because now you, um, you, you can't really search for the exact um, microsecond way to make the switch, or maybe you can. Well, actually you can. Um, yeah. The idea behind the click track is if yeah. you're working in a, a DAW, a digital audio workstation, right. um, mm. the measures that you see, as you see the music laid out, it's yeah. in time with the click. Okay. So if we're consistently recording to that same click, then right. you're always going to be playing the same length of time. I see. You're always going to get to the chorus at the same time. Yeah. And so that makes switching or cutting between tracks very easy. Right. But even without that, um, in today's technology, you can absolutely do that. Really? Um, where you can just you know you listen to it and you just tweak it over until yeah. you get it to where it sounds well, smooth. Well, you'd work the magic, but the point to be taken here is that if you if you think you need to come in and play, I mean, you definitely should be practiced. And I think the last time I came in, I probably could have used a little bit more uh, spiff. But but if you can play a, a song through um, start to end, great. If you can't, it doesn't matter. You can just uh, take d different cuts. Yep, uh, Mr. Uh, Magic here will mm -hmm. just essentially match it up, and and it's pretty seamless. And, yeah. and actually, you can be the judge because uh, um, you're going to hear some of the tunes that uh, 
gene edited, and um, if you can tell where the seams are, then you're a better, <laughs> got better ears than I do. I'm sure so, I don't even remember where they yeah, are. Well, you um, know, I'm glad you don't. But so, yeah, the, the process for recording, I, right. I tend to uh, say we're going to do at least three takes. Right. I want at least two good solid takes and right. a backup in case we find something right. in one of those two takes that we right. didn't get. Right. So it may be five takes or it right. may be eight takes, whatever it is, but I'm gonna be marking right. and making sure we have at least three solid takes. Right. Um, and then you cut between those, right. and it's called comping. Right. You comp a track, it's a composite. Right. Um, so no, you don't have to be expected to play it perfectly all right. the way through. Okay, um, that's good to know. If you can, that's wonderful, well, and a I, lot of first takes are the best takes. Well, but I also know it ends up costing less because there's less post-production. Is, uh, is that a true statement or no? Uh, to a certain extent, yes. Yeah. Um, it, it makes the it makes the editing m much makes, faster okay. if if it makes your uh, job easier. Yes, makes so, my job easier. So definitely easier. practice before you come and and uh, and um, if you can play the song through a hundred times uh, without error, you'll probably be okay. And then of course the hundred first time you come and you right. screw it up, it just happens. <laughs> Um, so um, let's say I'm, I'm more than just a single guitar player, and, and uh, okay. I, I mean um, you've got a lot of equipment around here. Indeed. Clearly, uh, uh, what other um, uh, kinds of uh, services or, or um, you know support can you give people who want to record? For instance, uh, if I uh, had a bluegrass band and I wanted to okay. work with them, I know you've 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 recorded bands before. Is Absolutely. It, yeah. So yeah. do they play on one track at a time, pretty much, or do you? Do we can do it. Uh, however is convenient for the artist. Most yeah. bands want to try and record as much at one time as they can oh, yeah. because they're used to playing that way. Right. They don't like following clicks usually, so they right. want their drummer to be the, the time, gotcha. and then they all play. So uh, for sure, I've done everything in here from the solo singer-songwriter like Mark, right. where Mark came in, it was right. just him and his guitar, right. and we put full orchestra oh, and yeah, bands behind amazing. him. And yeah, violins and, and, yep, and, and all and kinds uh, of things. Uh, or I've had full bands, five-piece bands come in, and uh, the drummer's in the drum room, right. and the other five guys are around, and we have little uh, headphone stations, right. so everybody can cue up their own little headphone mix and, right. and hear what they want to hear. Yeah. But uh, we've done things where the guys are all here, the drummer's in the other room, there's an amp in the booth, there's right. an amp in the other room, there's an amp in the bathroom, right. everything's spread yeah. out and isolated, but we're all playing at one time and right. capturing it like the real performance. Gotcha. So, uh, so let's let's uh, jump ahead. So now, uh, now I want to produce my uh, my media. I decide that I'm going to actually sell media as opposed okay. to just put up some files on the internet or on YouTube. Or and uh, uh, somebody gave me a, a vinyl album that they recorded the other night, and it's really wow. pretty. It's this green transparent. It's like you know, really cool. Uh -huh. So do you um, do you cut vinyl? Uh, after I a do vinyl? not cut is vinyl. That, is that no, a whole different? It's a bit of a different beast. Yeah. Um, mastering for vinyl is different than mastering for digital, oh, for so, sure. So, so the, tech, the technology for digital is so far removed from what they've used for... I mean, you're not recording on 8-track tape, are you? No, uh, I'm recording on hard disk, no, for, for sure. For, for somebody doing vinyl. Oh, well, anybody, they could be working on tape or they could be working on hard disk. I mean, the yeah. end medium is the end medium. What you record yeah. on is completely separate from that. Yeah, I, actually, I, I like... Uh, I remember the, the recording I did when I was like... 10, I played the clarinet, and I, my teacher actually had a machine that actually dug out the, the vinyl, you know, like, you know, cuts, you know. Really? Cre created. How yeah. cool is that? Yeah, yeah. That, uh, yeah that's the man, it's an old technology. That's pretty cool. Yeah, well, we're talking yeah, <laughs> quite a number of years ago, but then I, and I just, just unfortunately, I don't have the recording anymore. Mm. <laughs> so, uh, so um, yeah, that, the, the, the album that, that you produced for Mark, uh, the CD, the album, it was, was phenomenal. So you Thank had you. You, you played on it, and then Jay uh, and Ender played uh, yep. fiddle, well, I guess violin for that, and, mm -hmm. uh, and it took... So if I was going to, um, you know, looking at cost in general, uh, for, yeah, it, it, I know it's hard to say, but you, you, you're charging what? Uh, well, my, my current studio rate is 50 an hour, yeah. which is pretty middle of the road for the studios in town. Yeah. Uh, given the equipment and the, the quality of service, the value that I provide, I would say I'm um, extremely economical. Yeah. Uh, but there are definitely cheaper studios in town, yeah. but they're usually not using the same quality of gear yeah. and the same level of production, really, that, that I put out. Well, you'll get to hear uh, the results of, um, of Gene's work uh, if you download the... Uh, the uh, original tunes that I put up on uh, on Facebook and 
uh, I was real happy with them. I know uh, you were happy with them, and everybody mm -hmm. who's listened to them is happy uh, with That's them. That's most important. So it is important. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks for your time. I enjoyed Absolutely. talking to you, and uh, look forward to doing some more recording soon. Great. Thanks for coming in. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Hi, I'm Steve Rothenberg, and I'm here today with uh, another student of mine, Hannah Sanders. Mm -hmm. Hi, what grade are you in, Hannah? Fourth. Fourth grade, and you're, you're 10 years old, right? Mm -hmm. And um, you've been taking lessons for maybe uh, a month, maybe, mm -hmm. maybe your fourth or fifth lesson, and you hadn't played the guitar before, right? Did you play the guitar? Yes. Oh, you did play. You had some guitar. So you took some lessons before. Mm -hmm. Good. And that's the guitar that you took your lessons with before? Mm -hmm. it's, it's a great fit. It's a, a half-size guitar, I think, and, uh, and it, it actually has, it plays pretty well. So we're going to learn. Um, we've actually been working a little bit on a... Uh, um, a finger-picking version of Silent Night, and um, I, uh, one of my uh, uh, methods is to start um, students like Hannah finger-picking as early as possible just to get their uh, some uh, dexterity and uh, strength in their fingers. So um, uh, playing a song like Silent Night is, uh, uh, can be simplified so that it's, uh, it uses a, a pinch technique and then individual notes to catch the melody. So, for instance, it would sound like this. So the important element here is that we, we pick up the melody because if people can't hear the melody, they really can't tell what song you're playing. And we envelop the melody with uh, additional strings that are uh, played by fingering the chord that the melody starts in. This um, Silent Night starts in G as we're playing it. So we'd be playing the G chord and then playing our melody. And we play the G chord to start off with, with our ring finger on the D, which is the third fret on the uh, second string. So um, let's, let's hear you give it a shot. Now play the melody part. And you should use, remember when, we, when we're going to use our, uh, we're going to use three fingers. So when we play these last two strings, or the first and the second, we want to use, we want to use our middle, then our index finger. Excellent. Good. Do it again. Great. Now we're going to go down to D, but we're going to play it down here. We put our first finger on the fifth fret on the first string, and then our next to the third and fourth finger, or second and third fingers on the seventh fret, and you've got it. So now we pluck the bottom three. That was actually, you want to do the bottom three, three, two, and one. Do it again. Play the bottom three again. Good. And again. And now play the fourth, third, and the second. Good. So without moving any fingers at all, we, we have the melody, which is really this. But we're, because we're pinching three strings, the melody notes stand out. Now we go back to the G. So we start with our ring finger on the the first string, third fret, and we move it to the second string, third fret. C catch the bottom string. Uh, make sure you play the bottom string. Good. Again. Now move your ring finger to the second string. Oh. Good. Do that again. Good. Now we play C and go to the C chord and we're going to pinch the fifth string and then the bottom two, the second and the first. And do it again. And now put your pinky down on the third fret on the first string. Good. And now we play the melody. Now we play, go back to the G, which is the beginning of the song.
Excellent. Now we go back to the G. I mean the C rather. And and we're gonna when we play C we wanna play the fifth string and the second string and the first string. And then we put the pinky down. Okay, bend your wrist a little bit more so you can get that pinky straightened out. Good. Good, and now we play the melody. And then we play the G again. Good, now we go down to the, the D position. Oh, we want to play the bottom three strings. Now this is a little bit hard. We have to put our pinky down on the ninth, on the eighth fret. Now lift it and play the bottom two strings. Good. Now we play the full G with our uh, ring finger out on the first string. And now we go down to the seventh fret and we play the D shape chord, but we play it down on the seventh fret. You remember how to play D? Mm -hmm. uh, well, that's, that's the D that we played to get the melody, but this is actually a G chord. But it sounds, um, it's uh, higher and it, it gets us the melody we want. So let's, um, let's put our, uh, let's go down to the, the seventh fret, which is there. I'm sorry, that's the fifth fret. Oh no, actually, you're not, you don't have a dot on your third. So here's your fifth, this is the seventh. So the D chord, if you remember, that finger goes here. That goes there. Do you remember that? When we play it up here, it's D, but as we move it down to, we actually go from D to E to F to G. So um, all you're gonna do is pin pinch this once, and we're gonna play the bottom three strings. So going back, you, pl you just play this. Right? Sleep in heavenly peace. Make sure you get the bottom string. And now go down to the 7th fret and make the D shape, but it's going to be the G chord. Good. And play the bottom three strings. Very good. Now we go back to G, and we're going to go. That's sleep, sleep, and so we play the... And now move your finger, your ring finger to the third fret. Play the, um, make sure you play the second string. Now lift your ring finger. Good. And now we'll play D here. Now this is actually a D chord. Mm, close. Put this finger over here. That finger. There you go. And you just pluck it, pluck it once. Mm, good. And now we play the first fret, first fret on the second string, and then we strum G finally, that's the last chord. Very good. See, so now with a little bit of practice, uh, you'll be able to play that um, just like Hannah. Anybody knows who this is, but you should. Uh, the song's written for one of my best friends in the world, Olivia Rene. She comes down here and plays sometimes um, with me. She's from all around here and sings good. Um, so the song's for her.
the show and um, if you play and you'd like to be on the show or if you know somebody who might like to be or if you know of a venue that you uh, think might be a good one for us to come down and shoot um, why don't you contact us at the email address you see on the screen and uh, we'd love to uh, have you on